Hey, ya uh, YouTubers, Taz Man here, bringing you another episode of Foundry Virtual Tabletop from the ground up. And I uh, wanted to do another. We're gonna jump in some more macro stuff. I've I've had a lot of people sending me private messages saying that that's very helpful. They didn't quite understand kind of that layout and like I said before I don't fully understand it either I sometimes get in there and I'm exploring things and seem to get in these weird loops where I click on something and then it seems like I'm clicking on even though it's further down the tree it's kind of the same thing and it takes me the same stuff and it's same stuff and it seems endless I'm I'm not professing to be the guru at that stuff however one thing I would like to correct um I was saying the Monaco editor uh, is is definitely the one I prefer. Um, and as I played with it more and more, it just has too many compatibility issues or conflicts or whatever you want to call them. It just has these issues. So we're going to go ahead, uh, go ahead and uninstall that. I did find there is one just called Macro Editor uh, that we're going to install that has almost all the same function uh i still would prefer if monaco gets fixed or whatever gets updated i would definitely go back to that but for the interim we have macro we have macro editor uh which not without the comma uh which is also pretty good from what i've seen so if we just install that guy um there we go. It uses the ace lib, which is fine as well. We'll install that. So basically we're adding two new modules to our list of modules. We got rid of the Monaco, we added macro editor, and up here we have the ace library, which is more of a API type thing. Uh, other, other modules use this. This isn't so much a module that you can just go in and say, oh yeah, here's what it's doing. Um, I've already went and did uh, our update to our modules. I've checked, made sure our system's updated. Just make sure once again, it should say. Oh, actually, no, this one I didn't do. Um, but here's, here's what we're going to do. Now, what we're going to do might not be the most efficient way of doing, uh, accomplishing what we need. Uh, it's it's going to work I believe um, the way we need it to whether it's the most efficient I don't know uh, there are some components to it that uh, I haven't quite taken the time yet to figure out and, and this all makes sense in a moment um, but I think it will give us a good idea of like if you want to write some kind of macro that interfaces with characters and stuff like that. I think this still might be a pretty good primer in, in that. So we're going to do it anyway. Um, let me just tell you what it is. So I haven't seen a way necessarily that if you're rolling for initiative, there's a feat or a feature or class feature of, of, uh, can't remember which one it is it might even be a feat that allows you to roll initiative with advantage now looking at foundry itself I haven't really found a way of doing that we've tried doing you know holding shift to force it to pop up the little box and and this is actually something that has happened in the game that I'm playing not GMing that uh, that one of the players was having this issue that you know well do I just roll initiative twice and then you put in whichever one is the best one how how exactly do we do this so I was just messing around I'm just gonna put us on a blank scene just because this is going to be using up resources and stuff and we don't necessarily need that uh, so let's go ahead we'll just do this a testing like so and really I usually set the grid to 50 just because it gives you more more squares to play with uh, and then we'll go ahead and do 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 isn't it in here no we want to mark this one as active and then I believe 
we can toggle navigation which gets rid of that one all right so here we have just just a blank map it doesn't matter we don't need anything on it uh, we just want this blank space so uh, let's go ahead I don't remember what these were oh new macro uh, we're gonna create a new macro and we're just gonna talk about some basics of macros now that uh, we've already done a little of that so we're gonna go ahead and right cl uh, left click here we're gonna set it to script macro and we're gonna call this let's just call it initiative and yeah I N I T I E E is that right it, that does not look I N I T isn't it A T initiative boy I cannot spell right now initiative <laughs> oh well let's just call it testing <laughs> because <laughs> that's that's not my main goal here um so we're just going to call this testing because i can't spell initiative for some reason i'm drawn a complete blank um but uh that's fine so um let's go ahead and save that because right now we don't have right now if we were to do this uh if we right click and do edit and we type in here it's it's not it's not showing any syntax highlighting or anything like that and I really do personally I need that so we're gonna go into our manage modules we're gonna go ahead and enable macro editor which will also enable acelib and we're gonna save it and now at least we'll get some little squigglies and things telling us you know best practices um, so now if we go into edit macro here and we type, for example, uh, something. It will try and give us suggestions and stuff like that, even though this isn't really a thing. Um, it, it's gonna help us. Now, if you ever wanna return back to that, we can always just click on this and it goes back to boring. I don't know why you'd ever wanna do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is a lot of macros that I've seen don't follow what I consider best practices, which is encapsulating your code in its own little code block or its own little function. That helps segregate it. You know, if someone else writes a macro that has a similar name or something like that that's running, it's going to stop it from, you know, accessing things that shouldn't. We're, we're encapsulating it. So the way you do this is we're going to call and every Java, JavaScript and everything uh, has what's called a main function. This is where the main program goes. When you double click on a, a program, even I believe C sharp, uh, I think even C, but almost every programming language just has an entry point for that program that the, the OS interfaces with. And usually it's called main. So we're going to go M-A-I-N. And we're going to put two parentheses here. Oh, whoops. I'm not in that window. <laughs> M-A-I-N and two parentheses like so. Now, another thing that JavaScript doesn't seem very picky about is properly ending a statement. And you're supposed to end statements with a semicolon. I've noticed that Java, JavaScript really doesn't care. Now, Java is very finicky. If you do not end it with a semicolon, it does not like you very much. Um, actually, there's a couple other settings that I was just thinking of. Let's go look at acelib real quick and this, just so we know what settings are available in it. Um, so selection style is text, highlight, line, active, sure, why not? Highlight, select the word, cursor, smooth show invisibles no this would just uh, help you distinguish between tabs and spaces or non-printable characters i don't know if you ever use notepad plus plus but like if you have uh if you say show invisible character spaces will be a little period but it's centered up in the center of of the letter or character so if this was an h right here right here is where it would put a dot not down here saying it's a period in the corner here it'd be right there saying this is dot and lots of times like a, a tab would be two chevron arrows or maybe a little arrow or something like that we don't really care about that i just want to make sure indent guides uh there is one in here about line numbers i believe unless it's in the other thing uh gutter line da, 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 show widgets 
font family theme. I do like darker themes, so I think there's the Dracula, which is a pretty decent one that I actually like. Uh, Monaco is is probably in here as well. If we go down, lots and lots of different themes. This is just how it colors it, how how it colors uh, your your uh, comments and different parts of the thing. So let's go tab size. I usually set mine to two. If you're doing Python, it has to be four. <laughs> I hate that. I like Python, but I hate that it has to be four. Plain text. I think keyboard handler emacs vim i'm more familiar with vim but you can leave it where it is uh this just means that we'll be able to use key binding you know you can do a uh, change word which is cw and then a number and it it will do that uh horizontal scroll bars uh vertical scroll bar i always like visible scroll speed fine drag and drop delay First line number will be one. Da, da, da. I didn't see anything that says display line number, so maybe it's automatically doing that. Uh, then we don't need any of this. Then if we come down here to the macro, I believe it's in here, yeah, macro editor. Show macro editor by default. Okay, so those are our options. Now if we click on this, it will look, to me it'll look better. And I'm not sure if the Dracula one is, is a nice one here, but we can see we have line numbers and all that fun stuff now. I'm not sure what that one does. Oh, it breaks it out. That's kind of nice. I've never used that. Uh, so here's our main. So this is called a function and it is, uh, this is a function call. So when this program runs, it's going to see this and it's going, okay, there needs to be a function called main that's defined somewhere. So before we can actually, I mean, right now, uh, this might run, but it's not going to do anything. It's going to actually, it, I bet it'll fail, actually. If we do this, let's hit F12 so we can see our our thing here. All right. Make it nice and small since we have such limited space that we're playing in here. And if we click on that, I'm going to move it over here so it's outside of the pause. Put it on 7. If we hit that, we are going to get an error. Let's clear errors and make sure we get just that error. So we're going to get this error saying that uh, main is not defined. So that's what that's saying is you're calling main, but you never tell me what main is. So that's going to be our next step. We need to call or we need to define main. Um, and the way we do that is we come down here and we're going to do async, S Y N C async like so. And we're going to say function and we're going to type main and we don't need to pass any any variables or anything then we're going to go ahead and do a open curly brace and when we hit enter it'll automatically close that now this actually is a fully functioning uh, macro if we click it if we go clear this we should not see any errors so that's great. So what this is doing when it's launching, it's saying, okay, I need to find main. Then it comes down here and says, oh, here's main. This is what this means. And then it will go ahead and function. So the next thing we're going to do is when we've installed things, we get that little yellow bar up top or a blue bar or a red bar. Uh, we're going to play really quick with those. Those are our different notification bars. And the way we access those or pass info to those is we use a function that's pre-built. And this function has a namespace to it. So here we have main, which is right here. However, there's some built-in functions that Foundry knows about that it can use to launch different things. So in this case, the function is actually located in the namespace UI dot notifications n o t i f i c a t i o n s like that and then inside ui notifications there's something called error right there's there's three of them there's error there's warning and there's info so if we do error e r r o r you'll see that now we can do that right now, one thing you're going to see here, and this is what I was talking about, is 
you get this tiny little eye here saying, hey, this, is, this isn't really a warning, but it's a good idea, right? And it's saying missing semicolon at the end to say this is the full statement. This line is the statement. So now that we've done that, we can actually see that uh, we have that. Now, if we run this, we will get an undefined uh, undefined red bar up top. The reason it's undefined is because it wants us to pass in a message. Now if you go into the API information you can actually see uh, that the notification wants an error message right or a message to be displayed so that's why we're getting undefined is because it's it's going here it's expecting it to have some kind of value here we have nothing therefore it just says okay it's undefined there's nothing there so if we wanted to say something here we could do uh, this is a or an er error message so here we have, this is an error message. Now if we go save that, now we get this is an error message. We have the option to close it. Supposedly that red bar is supposed to stay up there. And at times it does stay up there. Maybe there's a another part that will keep it up there. Maybe there's another um, parameter we can add in there. Because there are error messages when Foundry throws an error message it stays up there forever until you click that little X. But it does seem like that does have it. Um, I don't know. Let's see if there is. I, I checking. Uh, da -da, I don't see uh, like a timer on it, but that's okay. So anyway, generally they display for five seconds and then they go away. Um, so let's go look at the other types. So now we'll actually be able to also send our other types. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm just going to copy this because I am a slow typer if you haven't noticed. We're going to hit C, go ahead and hit back, back, hit enter. We're going to hit V and V and V. The reason we're doing for it will become evident in a moment. So the next one we're going to do is let's do, we're going to go from the worst to the, to the best. So after an error, the next bad thing would be a warning, right? W-A-R-N. And then after that would be the info, which is just a simple, the little blue bar saying, hey, you know, this is happening or whatever. I-N-F-O. So we have info. So we're going to change this to, this is a warning, W-A-R-N-I-N-G, warning message. And this is an info, information message, info, info, <laughs> information message, right? Then we're going to have a fourth one, which is another error message. Um, I'm going to say error message two. Okay. So let's go ahead and hit save real quick. We're going to run this. And you'll see we actually only get three up here. Now after five seconds, they'll start going away. And then we can see that. So it's, it's kind of good just to know only three of these show up at a time as a default type of setting. If we close one of these, that second one's going to pop up. And it goes on top, not on bottom. So if you have a specific order, like if you're passing kind of almost a, I don't know why you do it, but if you were passing multiple lines, like a well, multi-line text uh, to your user and you want to do them in these bars for whatever reason, you'd want to do them in reverse order so that, so that uh, the last one would show up first if it's three lines long. Hopefully that makes sense. I, I don't know why you would do that, but if you did, that's just what you need to know. So now that we know how to actually do this, let's learn a little bit more. This is not going to be a JavaScript tutorial, but it might be a primer in helping you get some of the basics. So if we don't want to show one of these, for example, we don't want this first error to pop up, we can use a double slash to comment it out. And now that is commented. So it will not run. If we save and execute, you'll see 
we do not have an error message one. If we want to come out, comment out more than one thing, what we do is we can do a uh, slash star and then wherever the end of it, right now we're commenting out everything. So this guy is no longer terminated here, which is why we're getting this error saying, hey, I can't find the other squiggly brace. And this line here is saying, hey, the comment doesn't close anywhere because this is a multi-line comment. So to close it, we just do the opposite. We would do star and slash. And now we fixed all our errors. So if you have a chunk of code that you want to uncomment, then you could do this. Now, one thing I like to do, this is my own kind of personal best practice, I guess, is I like to have those on their own line so that, you know, I can simply delete this one and then I don't have to go find the second one. Uh, I can just see that it's a kind of almost like we have tabbed in with our function here. So we're gonna go ahead and leave these guys commented out. We'll, we'll leave them in there just for for knowledge sake, I guess. I don't know what else to call it. So now that we understand these basics, let's go ahead and look at what we want to do. We're at 21 minutes, okay. This might go about 30 minutes. So uh, we're only gonna do this next part and then I think we're gonna be good. So um, let's go ahead, put this back up to message. Now we talked a little bit, bit about how to access the individual things and we talked about uh, the canvas. I think we talked about game. Uh, there's some other things that we want to do, right? So the first thing we want to do is we want to check if a token is being controlled because other words, if we don't have a token selected, uh, then it's not going to be able to do any of the stuff to check what the dex is or anything like that. So we're going to really quickly, I think we have a guy in here. We have good Akara. We're gonna put him down here so we can actually see him while we have up our stuff, right? All right, so now if we go in here, go back to edit macro, we can move this over just a little bit and we can see our token. So right now, if I were to go in here and check if tokens are controlled, we talked about this in, I think, one of the last videos, uh, we would type C-A-N-V-A-S, so canvas, which is the the screen right here with the map and stuff, that's our canvas. Uh, then we would want to look for tokens, T-O-K-E-N-S, and we wanna see if there's any controlled. So if I do uh, dot controlled, C-O-N-T-R-O-L-L-E-D, and if we hit enter on that, we will see that there is none being controlled. Length is zero. So if we select this guy, and then we rerun this, now you'll actually see we have a token being controlled and it's array, it's spot in the array is element number zero. So if we go in here and look at zero, now we can see here is our stuff, all our information about said token, right? So if we wanted to look directly, if we wanted to skip this step of having to tab in here and here, all we would have to do then is add in that zero because now we know we have a token that is a oh, whoops that's the wrong one that uh, that so we know we have a token controlled element number zero we hit enter there and now we have right at the at the tip of our fingers is our information about the token so this is going to be our first thing to check do we have a token oh i did this wrong let's go ahead and do our slash enter and oh whoops that was backwards and here we go down here uh, and do uh, star slash okay all right so the first thing we want to do is check uh, if we actually have a token is if we have a token selected if we don't we want to tell the user hey, you're trying to run this macro. In order for this macro to successfully run, we need a token selected. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna, uh, let's just comment, make us a comment so we know what we're doing. Uh, comments are definitely a very good thing to have in your code. A lot of programmers, including myself, sometimes 
go really easy on the comment because we're in the zone thinking of what we want to do and we don't think about adding comments to everything but it's a very good habit to be in so we're going to check if if there is a token right if uh the token is s-e-l-e-c-t-e-d so we're going to check if a token is selected if not we want to throw an error we could we could say if not e-r-r-o-r right all right so <coughs> we're going to use a built-in function called if generally you'll know it's a function if you have a function name followed by parentheses. That's generally a function. Now this is just a code built in. This isn't a foundry one. This is a standard programming one. If you know any programming languages, you would see these all over the place. So we're gonna say if, and inside the if, we're gonna have our condition. And what we wanna do is check if this controlled thing, if that array is one. Because we only want one token selected. If we have two tokens selected, that is not going to work either. Uh, because we don't know which token is the actual token we want to uh, run our, our, our script against. So we want to make sure that one they only have one token. Uh, and also we want to make sure that there's not no token, right? Or that there isn't no that there's not not a token i don't know that's double negative uh so anyway so let's go in here and we want to say if and basically we're going to take pretty much what we have here if i hit up canvas tokens and um yeah controlled that's that's what we want so we're gonna do i have the d in there control c and we're just going to stick that in here and that did not work so we'll just type it so whoops so we're going to say if and we're going to say canvas uh, and i don't want a space i want a period to say it's the next part of that uh tokens t-o-k-e-n-s dot c-o-n-t-r-o-l-l-e-d oh e-d now because this is an array or a set i'm not sure exactly all the terminology that that I need for this because it's been a very long time since I've done JavaScript uh, what we want to do is use a special function called length so we're gonna check the length of this whole thing so we're gonna do L E N G T H so this is gonna check the length of controlled how many how many elements are in that array and what we want to do is make sure that if it's not one that we error out if it is one we're, we're golden but if it's not one that means there's zero or there's more than one so we're going to use the not which is the bang or the exclamation point and we're going to say equals and then we're going to say one so if this is true so if this evaluates to true saying it's not one there's something we want to do we want to throw out an error message so we're starting a new uh, code block and we want to throw out an error message so in fact because I'm a slow typer let's just go grab this error message right here and we will throw it right here and then what we want to do is say return which simply says we're done we can't do anything else return and it will throw us back outside of the main which will put us right here it will say hey there's no other calls that's the end of this macro right because this is this is defined by that so this is kind of not something that's going to run in line this is being called by that so now we're just going to type return and a semicolon because that's a good practice and now if we do this and we don't have our token selected that reminds me i want to go make it so i don't have to drag a box so we're going to go into core settings real quick and we're going to say left click to release and say save so now what that did is basically instead of having to drag a box like that to deselect i can just click off so if we do this now we run it we get an error saying this is an error message. I forgot to change that to be our actual error message because this is not very helpful. 
So let's say uh, would be nice. Say please. P l e a p l e a s e. Please. S e o e c. Select a single token. So we'll we'll make it more like we're serious by throwing an exclamation point in there. So now if we run this, we get please select a single token. If we select our single token, we get nothing. It, it actually worked properly. If we have, do we have more than one actor? We do, we have a mob. So if we have an acolyte here as well, and we have both of them selected, can I do it this way? No. Shift. Er, er. Yeah, they're both selected now. Uh, if I run it now, we'll still get please select a single token. So it only works now if we have our single token. That's exactly what we want. We want to make sure that we're taking care of any possible errors as we go. Um, all right, so we're at 30 minutes. I think this is a good stopping point. Um, I know I've kind of been scatterbrained. Like I said, I haven't done Java JavaScript for a very, very long time. I think it's been, what, like 15 years or so. I mean, JavaScript's been out forever. Um, so some of this might be a learning experience for me and you. However, this is not a JavaScript tutorial. If you want, there's lots of videos out there. Uh, I can look in refreshing my stuff. If you want to see JavaScript tutorial on my channel, I will go ahead and start working on that. More than happy. That'd be good for me as well because I will brush up on my Java, uh, JavaScript. Um, but anyway, I think this is where we're going to call it. Uh, we've, we've made it, so we've got a good editor now. We understand, hopefully, a little bit about JavaScript and how it kind of functions. And now we can actually throw errors, warnings, infos using a macro, and we can detect whether a single token is, is selected. I think it's, that's quite a bit for 30 minutes. So chew on that for a little while. And uh, in the next episode, we will continue on our, our goal here of making it so we can roll initiative with uh, advantage. And... Uh, yeah, that's it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Aside from that, comment, like, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Check out my Discord and my other channels. And don't forget to tell other people about my channel. Have them check it out. If they like what they see, they can sub. We can grow the channel. It will be awesome, my friends. And that is it. Until next time, I'll be seeing you later. Bye.